I'm with Donald Rennick, the manager of Royal Loch Nagar Distillery, and we're standing at the Top Dam, Donald. Yes, Top what? Dam for Royal Loch Nagar. What, what actually happens, Charles, is our water comes from five springs uh, up in the foothills of Loch Nagar. Loch Nagar itself being a mountain. Being a mountain, uh, and they run down pipes quite a long distance and two holding vessels up here at the back, um, and that is our water that we use for process. The overflow from these springs runs in and is collected in this dam and occasionally we have to use this dam if we start to run out of water. Uh, if there's not been a lot of rainfall, it's been a long dry period, then the springs can start to slow down. So we'd start to use this water. And what's the style of the water? Soft, hard? It's soft water, Charles. It's very, very good water. It's very clean water. and Very the cold, big, Very imagine. cold, and that's, that's, that's the process. big thing. Very, very cold. But the problem with that is, if we're forced to use this water in the height of the summer, this water can be very, very warm, and that's not good for distilling, as you very well know. Uh, so that can create production issues with this water in the height of the summer. And you were telling me that you reckon that this was built by John Begg, or perhaps even before. His predecessor, possibly. I, I would think this would be the original distillery, you know, water supply, uh, way back in the 1840s. Uh, we did have some issues with the dam quite recently, and we found an old uh, water channel that went through the dam here, uh, and I would say that that goes back to the original yeah. sort of the way it was built. You see it's very, very old. You see the way the, the lie of the land. There's probably been, a, been water lying in this hollow, but they've actually put this, this wall here, as you yeah. see, to hold it. Now this is the Lure, Lure Dam. dam. This Lure is Pond. a cooling dam, Charles, we call this. It's a cooling dam. So this water is used for the, for the worm traps. Yeah. So we circulate it through the worm traps, and we're going to have a look at them in a few minutes, but it's circulated through and it comes back in here. Right. Uh, and that water circulates around and also runs out, spills out, any excess spills out. It, and so it cools here before it goes it's, it's a nice yeah, it's, sort of system. It's a nice cooling system. Yeah. It's got loads of fish in it and there's lots of wildlife around here. But if you remember back in, in the 1840s when John Begg was around when he started this, one of the reasons he would have come here, he would have come here for, he's got nice farmland so he could grow barley, but the, he's got water for his production, but he's also got water as his power source. Ah, uh, yes. So he would use the water from that top dam to run his water wheels, and they were the power source for the distillery. Yes. So that would be the three main reasons why he came here, that he had plenty of water for the production, but he also had a head of water to drive his water wheels. Yeah. So you reckon this would be later than the top dam? This would be probably later. Yeah. yeah. Let's go and have a look at the worm trap. Okay. Worm tubs. Worm tubs. Some wash stills. Worm tub for the wash still. Spirit still worm tub here. Um, the water's quite warm. Yes, we, we actually run these very warm channels. That's part of the, uh, what we have to do to get our distillery character. We have to run our worm tubs quite hot. Now, why, what effect does that have on the style of the spirit? Well, what we're looking for, um, we're looking for lots of copper concentration. Right. So, the warmer you have this water, that delays the uh, condensing out. So when the vapours are coming through, they're actually hitting still some, some heat at the top, the warmest part. So it means that the vapours are going to carry on still in contact with copper to maybe about halfway down when it's colder and it will then condense out. So you're and increasing the amount of time that it has in contact with copper. And what effect does that have? That actually lightens the spirit, it makes it lighter. Because copper is a purifier. Yes, copper is a purifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in other distilleries, um, they would run them very, very cold. Yeah. Because they, they, would, they would want it to condense immediately it comes in. So they would run the water very, very cold. And how we do that is we control the flow of water in. We just put a, a very small amount of cold water in, right, and that controls controls the level and that allows the water to warm up. And, I the, and see. the other way of doing it would be you would flood it with cold water to keep the water cold. That's the two ways you would run a water. Yeah, yeah. But worms want to make a heavier style of course spirit. Of course they do. And we are kind of cheating if you like, we're kind of making it use the lights for it by increasing the heat in there by restricting them in the cold water. Yeah, no, it's very interesting that you can you can achieve different styles with the same piece of equipment. And how many distilleries are left in Scotland with worm tubs? 
there's not that many. I, I'm not exactly sure. I would guess it's maybe about, about a dozen, about say, 10. I was going to say 11, 12, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I would guess it. And we, our company's got nine distilleries with warm tubs. Uh, because you can make this wonderful spirit from them. You can change the character of your spirit by the way you're in your warm tub. It does, as you say, produce a heavy spirit. Mm. Um, and it's a traditional way of doing it, yeah. obviously, as well. So it's still nice to have warm tubs. Yeah, absolutely.